Africa is a continent of incredible variety, all shaped by the weather pattern and availability of water. Life is where water is. The cradle of civilization has always been along the rivers, lakes and oases. But with an increasing population, these are now hotspots of environmental change. Satellite observation now makes it possible to study and record that transformation in near real time, allowing us to see the changes we would not have been able to see just 10 to 20 years ago. These observations are crucial to decisions impacting the lives of communities, whose development and well-being hinges on water. Nowhere else is the importance of water more apparent than in the semi-arid communities, such as in Mauritania, where arable land is slowly being buried by the creeping deserts. Here, life has been reduced to a little more than an endless search for water. Not only must they search for their own drinking water, but for their animals as well. Elsewhere, in Tanzania, the impact of climate change on water resources is discernible through observing the receding glaciers of Mount Kilimanjaro which have been a matter of concern to scientists and governments in the region. Using satellite data, changes that have taken place on Mount Kilimanjaro over the past 30 years can be seen through time series imagery. Scientists believe that this change is as the result of a regional trend of decreasing precipitation and cloud cover that began over 100 years ago. If this trend continues, Research suggests that the glaciers on Mount Kilimanjaro will be gone by the year 2050. Environmental changes taking place across Africa directly or indirectly affect the quantity and quality of water resources. Not all changes, however, are the direct effect of climate change. Much of it is also caused by human activity. Degradation of the Mao forest complex in Kenya, for example, has affected the flow of numerous rivers originating from this area, impacting the livelihood of more than 7 million people. In West Africa, Lake Chad was once the sixth largest lake in the world. But persistent droughts and the increased diversion of water for irrigation have reduced it to roughly one-tenth its size 40 years ago. Satellite images show the dramatic change from the 1970s to the mid and late 1980s as much of the lake dried up. In recent years, rains have brought back some recovery to Lake Chad, but its significantly reduced surface area continues to challenge the livelihoods of local people. In Senegal, Michel Bemba's life has been made difficult by frequent droughts. But Michel is learning to adapt to his new environment with limited water resources. He's at a farming school today where he's learning a new drip irrigation technique which could save his future crops. Water is stored in tanks and then released through pipes directly onto the plant. Agronomists believe that drip irrigation is twice as efficient in the use of water than normal methods of irrigation. Elsewhere, back in Kenya, villagers are taking the initiative to combat their scarce water challenges as a community by implementing a rainwater harvesting method. This large rock is the backbone to their solution. When it rains, 
water runs down the face of this rock and gathers into this reservoir, then down through pipes into a storage tank. One of these hold up to 150,000 litres, which can keep the community going for months. The project was built and is managed by the community it serves, and everyone who joins the project shares its benefits. It is UNEP's mission to bring these observations in science to the attention of both policymakers and the public so they can better prepare for a future where water resources are expected to be even more scarce. UNEP is preparing a compelling and visual analysis of water resources, endowment and challenges in a landmark publication entitled Africa Water Resources Atlas – Challenges and Opportunities, which will bring together a wealth of Earth observation science focused on the continent's water resources. Pop tongue, pop tongue, pop tongue, pop tongue.